Now let's talk about the sample preparation. The sample preparation bench locates at your left hand side after entering the lab. Here is a photo to show the tools you will use to prepare the samples. They are all inside the two boxes on the sample preparation bench. Since the sample will be transferred into an ultra high vacuum system, you will need to wear nitrile gloves all the time during sample handling. Otherwise, your fingerprint or body grease will stick to the sample and outgas continuously. That will cause vacuum issue. Here is a video to show you how to prepare the powder sample. We are using a 1 inch sample holder. And here I cut a small piece of double set copper tape and attach it to the sample holder. And after removing the top cover of the tape, pick up your powder using spatula and apply it on the tape. Then firmly press on top of the sample to make a smooth and flat surface. After that, you need to remove all loose powders by shaking the holder in an angle. And now you have your sample ready. You could also prepare multiple samples on a single holder, though you will need to avoid cross-contaminations between samples during the preparation. For film or box sample, you just need to tape your sample firmly onto the holder using double set tape. Next, let's go through the sample loading procedure. The basic idea here is just open the sample introduction chamber, put your sample in, then seal the introduction chamber and let it pump down. Let's do it step by step. First, check the valve position of the gate valve between the intro chamber and the main chamber. Make sure the valve is physically closed, indicated by this white mark. You do not want to accidentally vent the whole chamber during this process if that valve is left open. Next, open the main valve of the nitrogen gas bottle, which is attached to the lab wall. Here we use ultra high purity nitrogen gas to vent the intro chamber during the loading process. The regulator is preset. So there's no need to adjust the regulator and the secondary valves on this cylinder. So I just tape down here. Number three, back to the computer, locate the vacuum watcher software and push the backfill intro button. This will cut the intro chamber from the pumping line and open the vent valve to let the nitrogen gas into the introduction chamber until it reaches the one atmosphere pressure. Once the pressure reaches the atmosphere level, you could just lift the intro chamber lid and grab your sample with a special chain as indicated in this photo and slide your sample onto the sample loading fork. Here I push the end of the sample to make sure it reached the end of that fork. After that, just put the lid back on. So now we're ready to pump this thing down. To pump the chamber back down, let's go back to the vacuum watcher software. And this time, push the pump intro button. This will close the vent valve 
and start the pumping process to the intro chamber. Next, let's go back to the gas bottle. This time, go ahead and close the valve all the way to the end. Finally, you will need to turn on the cold cathode gauge by push the main power button, then flip the high voltage switch from off position to on position. This will allow you to read the pressure of the intro chamber all the way down to 10 to the negative 7 scale. The sample will be ready for transferring once the reading is below 1.2 by negative 6 torr. Once the code cathode gauge reads 1.2 by negative 6 torr, we will move forward to transfer sample. Before the process, go ahead and shut down the black code cathode gauge. Then, let's go to the Phi Summit software and locate the electronic control panel and click the sample stage tab. This will bring the stage control interface to the front panel. Then click the sample intro button. This will move the sample stage to the loading position and also bring this small intro window for further action. Next, let's go to the vacuum watcher panel and click the transfer sample button. This will open the gate valve between the intro chamber and the main chamber, and the white mark will physically move from closed position to open position. Step number three, push the sample transfer arm all the way into the main chamber until the handle reaches the stop position. After this, the sample will sit right on top of the sample stage. So now let's go back to this sample intro window and push up Z button. This will raise the stage slowly to catch the sample from the bottom. Once this motion stopped, fully retract the transfer arm. So here is a magnetic sensor at the end of the transfer position. So make sure you fully retract the transfer arm to the stop position. That will trigger this detector and send a signal to close the gate valve. Finally, go back to the intro window and click set button. This will bring out this holder information window. In this window, you will need to type in the sample holder size information. For our case, it's one inch holder and the sample thickness information. For thin film or powder sample, it should be zero or one millimeter. Those information will allow software to set up a software limit for sample motion along vertical direction and will prevent the potential damage by moving the sample too far in the vertical direction. So now push the OK button. This will close the window and now the sample is in the main chamber and ready for further action. Now we have sample in the main chamber. And next, we will need to make sure all the electronics are in the correct setting. So here I'm talking about the X-ray source, the electron neutralizer, and the argon ion gun. All those settings can be assessed by clicking the corresponding tabs on the electronic control panel. For X-ray source setting, Make sure 
the focused X-ray source or FXS is selected and we are using the 100 micron meter 25 watt power setting. For electron neutralizer, make sure the neutralizer function is selected. For ion gun setting, recall that the ion gun in this system serves two purposes. It could be either used as a high energy argon ion sputtering or a low energy argon ion neutralizer. So the proper setting will be selected for both functionality as shown here. The X-ray source and the electron neutralizer will be ready right after confirming the electronic settings as shown in the previous slide. But for argon ion gun, there is argon gas involved in this operation. So we need to take extra step to prepare the argon ion gun before its operation, as shown in this slide. First, since we will need to actively control the argon pressure during its operation, a pump will be required for its startup. So let's go to the vacuum watcher software, click the differential valve open button. This will switch the pumping line from the introduction chamber to the ion gun. Now the vacuum pump we used to pump the introduction chamber before will be redirected to the argon ion gun while the intro chamber itself just sit there without any pump power. Next, let's go to the electronic setting window and locate the ion gun setting tab. In this tab, let's go ahead, click the start standby button. This will start the argon ion gun filament and then check the box for extractor pressure. This will allow us to monitor the argon pressure inside the argon ion gun. The argon flow is controlled by a thermal valve unit on the left-hand side of the XPS electronic rack. So next, let's go ahead and locate this white box. Make sure the green power light is on. And then just flip this white switch from the limit position to the set position. After this, the thermal wall will start regulate the argon flow into the argon ion gun, eventually set the argon pressure to be 15 millipascal, as shown in this window. Notice, so this procedure will take usually one to two minutes, and you will see the argon pressure slowly ramp up from zero all the way up to 15 millipascal. So you got to be patient and eventually the argon pressure inside the argon ion gun will be stabilized at 15 millipascal.